What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Sheep filling in for Tom O'Brien. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show on TFNN. Hope you all are having a great day. Let's take a look at what we got going on in the market right now. Really not a whole lot. The composite off about 0.31%. The Dow Jones Industrial off about 0.63%. The dollar uh, remaining higher. You've had a lot of weird uh, kind of economic data come out, right? Um, does it seem like rates are really going to need to be lowered in such a quick manner? Uh, of course, this all kind of depends uh, what we, we get in the months coming forward. But we're trading up in the higher range right now, trading at 102. So I mean, this is really getting out of that low 100 area um, that the market was kind of wanting for the dollar, especially in light of lower interest rates. Uh, you have really the big news as well is, is crude. So crude has made some massive moves to the upside, uh, at least in the Brent, trading up about 5.44% uh, and then in the forward contract, 5.55%. Obviously, the big news on that is really this is kind of nexus around um, Israel's kind of motions in the Middle East, right? So we we're talking a little bit um, how they're fighting Hezbollah and Lebanon. Uh, they also struck some target in Syria that landed pretty close to a Russian embassy. And so the Russians just recently asked or at least advised most of their citizens who lived in Israel, which is about 1.5 million, uh, to get out of Israel while you still have the chance to do so. Um, you know, obviously that's pretty uh, <laughs> loaded language in a sense, I would suppose. And then you had uh, Biden as well say that Israel uh, may attack Iranian facilities. So something along those lines would absolutely disrupt um, <laughs> the oil industry in and of itself. Uh, this causes a big issue. We're also getting into a colder season, of course. You're seeing natural gas go up with that kind of stuff. Let's look a little bit at what Biden was saying. Uh, he said Biden added that the U.S. advises the Israeli government on military operations but doesn't dictate them, which is a little bit stressful, honestly. And there's nothing going to happen today, he says, but we'll talk about that later, which is also a little strange. This is really ramping up. I think there's a lot of strange kind of philosophy going on at the upper levels of Netanyahu's government as well that can kind of add uh, a little bit of fire to this entire situation. Uh, and any kind of severe breakdown in Iranian and Israeli relationships, obviously they're pretty broken down now, but an actual conflict um, would, would cause major, major issues. Um, so we're looking at that as it stands now, this is really people kind of hedging against any potential uh, conflict that may arise. Yeah, that me e mini off about 0.43%. That gold contract doing okay today, doing at 2,677 and 90 cents. You know, I do believe as well if we get some really strong stimulus, which you are seeing at least in the reflected in the Chinese uh, stock market, uh, you're going to get some continued buying of gold uh, to that upside as well. We're also going to have Tim Ord on in the next segment, so make sure to stay tuned for that because uh, he's going to have some good insights for us as well. Copper getting a little bit knocked down today, trading down about 2.3 percent at 450 on that contract. And then the Russell, again, you know, talking about this idea of the dollar going high, no one's really sure exactly how this economy is going to kind of pan out. I mean, your your small caps are not exploding, and and usually when you get a major contraction like 50 basis points in interest rates, you're going to see small caps get pretty strong. Right, and, and we're not really seeing that right now. Silver's up about 1.35%. Uh, let's see, Celsius took a dive today uh, as well. I think that's kind of just general technicals occurring in Celsius, because uh, no large news came out, but we were speaking about them a little bit yesterday. Uh, if you missed that, you should check out the archive on our YouTube channel. Uh, it's Tiger Financial News Network. Let's see, Steel Dynamics not doing much either. Meta doing all right today. Yeah. And we'll see again. What I'm anticipating for Steel Dynamics is probably a pullback to this 120 level and then a rejection at that. And if that's the case, I think we have a new trading pattern getting formed. And their Tesla's off in a big way today, off about 4%. You're having uh, their, their big robo taxi reveal here in a couple days uh, on the 8th. And they just had the chief information officer quit. You've had a lot of other C suite executives quit recently as well. Uh, they just came out. They, Plan 800 million debt sale backed by prime leases, trying to get some more um, access to uh, capital that round instead of diluting the stock in any way. So it's preparing to sell 783 million in debt backed by automotive leases to its prime, or excuse me, from its prime borrowers amid a surge in similar asset-backed securities within the industry. 
And that's kind of about what we have uh, today on Tesla. But yeah, I think the C CIO checking out is obviously a major issue because in my opinion, I mean, the information that it has in it, and it's kind of like tech suite and how it defends against certain attacks and, and deploy these kind of things is really what makes Tesla so valuable. It's not so much, you know, the car development or anything like that, but, it, but it's going to be that automation. And then, of course, if they can get everyone onto the uh, similar charging platform that they have, that obviously uh, will be massive for them as well. Uh, kind of in this news, you have EVGO, which blew up today. We'll take a look at these guys right now. Yeah, so up 60, well, up 60.43%, trading uh, really from above $4. Uh, essentially, they got a lot of money from the U.S. Department of Energy to expand the networks, and they do the charging stations. So this is massive, and again, this is what I've been saying for a relatively long time, especially, you, you know, people can get into these kind of heads, uh, like mind spaces with, you know, really wonky, you know, negative PE companies or, or super high PE companies and stuff like that. And, uh, or, you know, the effectiveness of things like electric vehicles. But the point is, is that this government, and regardless of who wins in this election, it's going to continue to happen as well, continues to dump a ton of money in into alternatives, right? So you had the Department of Energy uh, give them $1.05 billion. That's a conditional loan guarantee. The financing would allow the Los Angeles-based company to build out about 7,500 additional fast charging stalls across the U.S. and states, including Arizona, California, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, uh, which is pretty solid. This current administration is pushed to build 500,000 strong national electric vehicle charging network by 2030. And I promise you, there's a ton of spaces, especially in areas, you know, like, you know, Florida, I didn't, Texas isn't listed, but but same kind of concept where you just have these kind of vast lots that are kind of empty now, um, you know, with the fall of certain kind of uh, large department store brands. This is a perfect spot for them, and I see them being utilized at least in St. Petersburg, uh, through this route as well. Incentives will also lower installation costs for operators as charging plugs are more expensive in the U.S. than any other region. EVGO operates nearly a 1,000 fast charging stations currently, and they recently partnered with General Motors to install an additional 400. So definitely some really positive news uh, for you know EV bros in general, but also EV go folks stay right there we'll be right back with tim ord of the ord oracle take a look at what's going on at the market and gold